This is EDUC 4703U Teaching and Learning, Problem-Based Learning for UIT. This is Session 1, Video Clip 4. This video clip is entitled Problem-Based Learning or PBL Introduction Part 1. The analysis questions for this video clip are as follows. 1. How is project-based learning different from problem-based learning? 2. What roles do real-life problems play in PBL? Number three, what is meant by the situatedness of a PBL context? Number four, what distinctions can be made between mathematical word problems of the sort that you may have encountered in elementary, high school, or beyond compared to PBL problems? This video clip deals with definitions of PBL and one of the first uh, part of the de definitions will take a look at what does PBL really stand for, project or problem-based learning. Is there a difference and what does, uh, does it really matter in terms of overall context? There are multiple ways in which PBL can be defined as you'll discover in the literature. This video clip will start to unpack the way PBL will be defined for the purposes of this course. PBL itself can be oriented in two separate ways, as project-based learning or problem-based learning. While the two are associated to each other, there are also several distinctions between the two. Project-based learning may well deal with seeking solutions to embedded problems. However, my take on the distinction is that the overall emphasis is on an end product in that a project is produced. Wikipedia defines project-based learning as instruction relating questions and technology relative to the students' everyday lives to classroom projects. Through being involved in a project, students take a problem and apply it to a real-life situation to produce a solution. Problem-based learning, on the other hand, typically is more closely aligned to open-ended inquiry in that groups of learners analyze the presented context or situation and can determine the questions to be explored as well as the process that will be employed to create or build proposed solutions. Skills developed in problem-based learning then will then include problem finding as well as problem solving. The products of PBL may include an application to a real-life situation, however this is not required in all instances as the end product may be defined by the learners themselves. This course will require problem finding on the part of the learners, but the required end product will be a problem-based learning object and a paper providing rationales for the decisions made, in, made regarding the inclusion of various components within the problem-based learning object. General characteristics of PBL then can be defined, or PBL can be defined as a curriculum model designed around real life problems that are ill structured, open ended, or ambiguous, and is suggested that PBL engages students in intriguing, real, and relevant intellectual inquiry and allows them to learn from these life situations. That's taken from Fogarty, Problem Based Learning, uh, and other curriculum models for multiple intelligences classroom. Um, 1997. Problems are context specific, that is, the problems to be studied are set within specific settings. These settings are either simulated to mirror reality or are taken from real situations. Another way of looking at this is to suggest that the learning is situated, i.e., learning that takes place in the same context in which it is applied. Lave and Wenger, 1991, argue that learning should not be viewed as simply the transmission of abstract and decontextualized knowledge from one individual to another, but a social process whereby knowledge is constructed by all participants. They suggest that such learning is situated in a specific context and embedded within a particular social and physical environment. Some will recognize this type of structure in case-based activities. Typically, the cases or studies are written descriptions of a situation, and the case concludes with the posing of a problem to be addressed. In this course, we'll be dealing with contexts or situations that are video-based. 
Regardless of their format, they will continue to exhibit characteristics of being contextually situated. The context or settings within which the problems are found in the real world, that is, um, the video-based cases mentioned earlier may be based on recordings of real events, or they may simulate real events. The real main point here is that the context or situations depicted must be closely correlated to a real life with, it, with all of its complexities, richness, and ambiguity in order to allow the learner to relate to the setting of the context. Engagement with a problem is far more likely if the learner is placed phys virtually or physically into a setting that is relevant and intriguing. Word problems, as structured in mathematics courses, do not fit the characteristics of problems in PBL settings. Word problems tend to be very structured, typically giving only specific information that is necessary to construct the appropriate formula. They also tend to be closely close-ended in that there is only one specific correct solution to the word problem. Overall, well-constructed word problems are anything but ambiguous. This is because the word problem has been abstracted from real situations, amongst other things. Problems in PBL are very different in that they are situated within real context or context that mirror reality. As real situations are messy, complex, and ambiguous, there will be opportunities for multiple ill-structured problems to be identified in different ways. If learners are allowed to find their own, the identification of problems will ultimately depend on the real life or the life experiences of the learners themselves. Rich situations will also be open-ended, allowing for a wide variety of possible solutions. This is primarily taken from Sproken Smith and Harlan, 2009, Learning to Teach with Problem-Based Learning, um, Active Learning in Higher Education. From a theoretical perspective, there is an important educational approach used in PBL. This approach requires that the students work on the problems that are presented to them in order to gain the basis and grounding they need to pursue the problem itself. This inverts the usual patterns of problem solving found in universities and undergraduate courses throughout the world. Normally, one would assume that the students already have the knowledge within their grasp before they begin to solve a given problem. With PBL, the knowledge is acquired through working on the problem itself. The reference here is Hillman, 2003, Learning How to Learn, Problem-Based Learning, the Australian Journal of Teacher Education, and you will find the, uh, a link to this particular um, journal article given in the WebCT part of this course. The synthesis questions for this particular um, video clip are four, and they are, number one, why is the discussion of differences between project-based learning and problem-based learning a bit misleading? And how can these be distinguished when a PBL process is completed? Number two, how can the relevance of PBL context for a wide variety of learners be assured? Why is it important? Number three, why is it important to allow the learner to identify the problems that will be addressed rather than presenting them to them? And number four, why should PBL problems be ill-structured, open-ended, and ambiguous?